On April 23rd, 1856, the so-called Independent Order of Odd Fellows held a lively procession in Cincinnati. Over 4,000 people, including the order's founder, Thomas Wildey, and other members from Baltimore, participated in what was considered to be the most imposing pageant ever witnessed in Cincinnati. In the parade's aftermath, Reverend J.D. Williamson, a moderator for the Presbyterian Church, delivered his oration on the Odd Fellowship's conservative influence. And he said, quote, when men meet by the sick bed and the grave with such purposes as Odd Fellows meet, feelings will arise that surmount the prejudices of nations, party, and sect. The common bond of holy charity will comprehend them all. So strong is this influence that if ever evil hands should, in earnest, be employed in dissevering our glorious union, uh, the Odd Fellows would be found the last to quit the tie that binds this great people into one nation. This Protestant minister's eloquent speech about an obscure, non-sectarian, benevolent society is quite significant. It reflects the collaborative relationships between charitable communities in American cities like Baltimore during the mid-19th century, as beautifully illustrated in this album quilt from Mezda's collection. More than one tie can be observed in Mezda's quilt dated circa 1848. A symphony of color, the album quilt encompasses domestic craft forms that intersect not just religious, but also fraternal communities in Maryland's eastern shore, including the Odd Fellows, whose highly charged symbols appear in over 28 quilts, quilt squares, and bed coverings that I identified in my research. As such, it represents a communal project that articulated three main ideas, like fraternalism, volunteerism, and altruism. With symbols and users associated with Baltimore's English-German churches and independent order of Odd Fellows, Mezda's album quilt represents a sophisticated patchwork of cultural traditions and aesthetics. As an object of collective exchange, memory, and structure, the Mezda quilt bound homogenous groups into one close-knit community in order to aid Baltimore society and beyond during, during the late 1840s and early 1850s, a period of drastic social change and commercial growth in antebellum America. As the third largest U.S. city in the 1840s, Baltimore experienced industrialization along with population growth and diversity that fueled efforts in social activism. Situated at the head of the Chesapeake Bay further inland, Baltimore offered a protective harbor for shipbuilding industries and maritime trade. And revolutions in technology, transportation, and communication created more leisure time while religious movements and new social organizations like the Odd Fellows fostered networks within the city and its nearby counties. Both forces facilitated access to quilt designs, materials, and labor. A massive influx of German and English immigrants arrived in the late 1840s as a result of the Irish potato famine and the unsuccessful German Revolution of 1848. By 1850, approximately 51,200 foreign-born citizens were in Maryland, 70% of whom were listed in Baltimore census. The city's proximity to southeastern Pennsylvania and Frederick, Maryland, both areas with the largest German populations, contributed to widespread Germanic design influences. Furthermore, events surrounding the Mexican-American War, abolition movement, and cholera epidemic necessitated efforts for the improvement and relief of citizens in need. Consequently, voluntary organizations throughout Baltimore served as agents of benevolence. These factors contributed to the development and spread of Baltimore album quilts between the 1840s and 1850s. Album quilts, also known as friendship or signature quilts, were a common form of early block style quilting. Stemming its name from keepsake album books, or commonly known today as autograph books, that were popular in the 1820s, these quilts consisted of individual applique squares or blocks layered with swatches of fabric to create texture and dimension. Most fancy work squares were made using commercially available kits and pieced together by quilt makers to create an album of sorts. A member of the group usually supervised over the placement of blocks, ensuring their size and intricate designs melded together to achieve an overall effect. 
female makers, often of English and German heritage, made album quilts as gifts to commemorate a special occasion or as tokens of love, respect, and remembrance toward community members, especially their ministers, departing congregations. For instance, the Winterthur Museum holds in its collection an album quilt made by parishioners of Old Otterbein Church, also known as the Second German Reformed Church of Howard's Hill in Baltimore. And you can see here, it's on the, le on the right, and it demonstrates stylistic influences, similar to Mezzas' example. More often than not, album quilts also served charitable purposes, whether as warm protective coverings for the impoverished roaming Baltimore streets or as presentation pieces and expositions. Beginning in 1848, the Maryland Institute for the Promotion of the Mechanic Arts hosted annual exhibitions to encourage American industry and artistic achievements among the working classes. Winners in quilt competitions were frequently published in show catalogs as well as newspapers like the Baltimore Sun, which referenced an Odd Fellows quilt from an institute fair on November 4th, 1848. Through venues like these, female quilt makers were given a platform to auction off their finished quilts and raise funds for good causes, promote community service, and advocate for social justice, all while disseminating the album quilt style. Mezzas quilt is constructed in the grid format with 25 applique squares on an off-white cotton ground surrounded by sashing and a crosshatch border, one that is rarely depicted in Baltimore album quilts. Each square contains patterns denoting love, friendship, and religious virtues. For instance, the two squares that you see on the upper left and right with their heart-shaped garlands symbolize devotion to Christ, believed to be the true vine, as well as the church where God is the keeper of the vineyard. Additionally, pineapples with cross-like configurations that you see on the bottom row squares not only represent the American symbol of hospitality, but could also indicate romantic convictions. German folk art objects like Frochters inspired the symmetrical geometric designs on Mestis quilt. Billfots, tulips, and flower vases with flying doves and other birds are examples prevalent in this quilt. Over time, the German folk tradition blended with classical English motifs like medallions, swags, and grapevines to create hybrid designs that are epitomized in Pennsylvania German arts and crafts. The quilt's vibrant red and green color scheme with some blue and yellow was favored among German American makers in the Middle Atlantic states. And by the mid 19th century, red and green fabrics became readily available and inexpensive to the middle classes, which is why they predominate in Maryland quilts of this period. As a thriving seaport, Baltimore boasted a strong industry and market for imported and locally made textiles sold by merchants. Mestis quilt then chronicles the accumulation of various fabrics that were saved and recycled from an assortment of merchandise. However, these were not just scrappy fabrics patched onto a quilt. The skilled application and repetition of cloths, embroidered embellishments, and techniques shown on the quilt from reverse to stuffed applique indicate two or more expert hands. The actual makers and owners of Mezda's quilt are currently shrouded in mystery. While a few unidentified initials are inscribed throughout the quilt to indicate multiple makers, two names were investigated during my four weeks at Mesda. One square encloses a floral cartouche that reads E.C. Deckel, April 6, 1848. As previously mentioned, women presented album quilts as gifts to distinguished community members or religious leaders. Could E.C. Deckel then refer to a female maker or a church member or minister, perhaps even an odd fellow? According to Maryland's passenger list records, 25-year-old Elizabeth Diekel immigrated to America with Christian Diekel from Ahrensburg, Germany, while aboard the Leocadia in 1837, and so would have been 37 years old when the quilt square was completed in 1848. However, she did not claim Baltimore, but rather Philadelphia as her home. And alas, numerous other searches on, De on Deckel did not yield fruitful results. However, I did discover two other surnames marked in permanent ink. The only legible signature that I could decipher was A. Freeberger. The 1850 Baltimore census lists an Andrew Jackson Freeberger, 
a 19-year-old machinist who later became a well-known employee of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. Born to parents John and Elizabeth Freeberger of Switzerland, he was christened at the First German Reformed Church in Baltimore, only a couple blocks away from Oddfellows Hall. George Freeberger and Jacob H. Freeberger were other major contenders, both of whom served as members of the Oddfellows. George is listed in Matchett's Baltimore Duck Directory as constable at Calvert and Mercer Streets, while Jacob was a huckster in Conway Street, serving as junior warden of the Odd Fellows. A. Freeberger may share a connection with one or both of these men. Although the lack of digitized membership records in Baltimore's German Reformed churches and Odd Fellows lodges prevented me from com confirming the identities of each moniker, I intend to delve further into these names. The two signatures were likely inked by a quilt maker for a specified payment, often a dime, and they also demonstrate the influence of Victorian album books, with pages recording the drawings and names of one's closest friends and family. Aspects of impermanence and anonymity are attached to the faded signatures, one that is arguably uncharacteristic of Victorian society's tendency to immortalize loved ones. It raises important questions, specifically who or why these individuals had their names inked rather than cross-stitched. Did they sign or purchase this quilt at the Maryland Institute Fair or other fundraising event? How did these specific people fit into the album quilt narrative? These puzzling queries reveal the complexities in investigating the provenance of folk art objects. Historical evidence from census records and city directories is sometimes not enough to warrant specific attributions. Nevertheless, while the quilt presently evokes more questions and answers, it allows us to sketch the vignettes of Baltimore citizens who are involved in the quilt's construction and ownership. In doing so, places and communities are stitched together. The plethora of symbols on Baltimore album quilts communicated intense loyalties to fraternal organizations, governments, and religious institutions. Mezdas quilt squares in particular express ideologies of the independent order of Odd Fellows, a benevolent society in America whose original members comprised almost exclusively of mechanics from the middle and industrial classes. Evolving from its 18th century predecessor, the ancient order of the Society of Odd Fellows in England, the independent order of Odd Fellows was officially founded in Baltimore on April 26, 1819. Although individual lodges were already established in American cities like New York, English-born coachmaker Thomas Wildey is credited for self-instituting the country's first Odd Fellows branch. A sociable personality who had recently immigrated to America in 1817, Wildey desired an organization for companionship and advertised seeking any Odd Fellows in Baltimore. Four individuals met up with Wildey at the Seven Stars Tavern where they envisioned a new Odd Fellows Lodge. As their grandsire, Wildey actively recruited new members and enacted new lodges across the Eastern Seaboard. By his death in 1861, more than 200,000 members joined the Odd Fellowship, which evolved into the largest fraternal order in North America during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. As the order encountered rapid growth in its early decades, the Grand Lodge of Maryland resolved to build what became known as the Odd Fellows Hall on April 26, 1831. The building, which no longer stands, occupied a prominent place on 30 North Gay Street, near Baltimore's German-American wards. In honor of Wildey and his contributions to the order, representatives from the Grand Lodge of Odd Fellows in Maryland erected a Doric column for their esteemed founder on April 26, 1865. Both the Odd Fellows Hall and elements of the Wildey Monument are memorialized in other Baltimore album quilts, thus conveying the idea that these quilts possess commemorative functions. Since 1819, the Odd Fellowship works to elevate mankind's personal and social development as well as provide mutual aid and benefits to others. Guided by principles of friendship, love, and truth, their critical mission is to visit the sick, relieve the distressed, bury the dead, and educate the orphan. The order's practical function, though, was to provide a system of death benefits and support to its members, especially their widows and orphan children. Its institutional framework is composed of different degrees within three levels, known as the subordinate lodge, 
encampment, and patriarch militant. Members are entitled to hold an office or position them in their lodge once they pass the third degree that's personified as truth. From there, they can advance further into the odd fellowship through higher degree branches like the encampment and patriarch's militant. All of these levels govern each member's self-improvement and hold fast the principles of fraternal harmony. Members of the Odd Fellows in 19th century Baltimore either shared connections with or belonged to the Freemasons and or the city's German Reformed and Methodist churches. Their membership growth practically coincided with the spread of Methodist congregations in Baltimore, nicknamed the birthplace of American Methodism. Between the years 1843 and 1861, nearly half of the 81 new church congregations in Baltimore were Methodist. About 10% of the city's population belonged to Methodist congregations, with one-third of quilt names having a Methodist connection. These numbers elucidate the theory that Methodist quilt makers likely comprised of Methodist women. Meanwhile, Masonic and Odd Fellow symbols are frequently illustrated in Baltimore album quilts, despite the fact that the missions of both organizations had little in common. Although symbols of these fraternal societies tended to overlap, their manifestations significantly differed from one another. Many odd fellow symbols, while instilling a sense of mystery and wonder, appeal to the character of the Jacksonian era's democratic man. In Mrs. Quilt, the chief odd fellow symbols are assembled in the left-hand square, which is located along the second top row of the quilt. Here, the heart and hand is centrally placed within a laurel wreath, while the three-link chain of fellowship, representing friendship, love, and truth, sits below. Usually associated with charity, the heart and hand embodies honesty, candor, and sincerity in Oddfellow's vocabulary. Whenever the Oddfellow greets his brother, his welcome proceeds from the heart, and when he greets his brother, he virtually says, this is the welcome and language of an honest and generous soul. This precise symbol appears in Victorian gravestones throughout Maryland, including Wildies at Greenmount Cemetery in Baltimore, thus proving to be excellent sources for album quilt motif comparisons. The majority of Odd Fellow symbols align with those from denominations like the Methodist and German Reformed churches, largely because the organization modeled itself on Judeo-Christian tenets. The Bible, representing the Odd Fellowship's doctrinal foundation, is pictured in Mezzo's quilt, Winterthur's old Otterbine church quilt, and the Smithsonian American History Museum's album quilt, which was made by the ladies of Columbia Street Methodist Church in 1847. The serpent, twisted on a rod that you see on the bottom left square, alludes to Christ's death on the cross, as well as the brazen serpent that was erected by Moses to chastise the Israelites for their sins. Other related symbols in Mezzo's quilt are less obvious. The central medallion square that you see on the upper right with its stuffed applique most likely signifies the Odd Fellows' shining sun motif. And images like the beehive, crescent moon, and stars also feature prominently in Mezzo's quilt square. These emblems, while associated with the Odd Fellows, are also specific to the degree of the Rebecca, a sister branch of the order. In 1850, Schuyler Colfax, later U.S. Vice President to Ulysses S. Grant, wrote a degree for women seeking involvement in the order. By September 20, 1851, Colfax prepared his statement, and after considerable debate, the degree was adopted by a vote of 47 to 37. Thanks to Colfax, the Odd Fellows garnered a reputation as the first fraternity to establish a branch for women way before they could vote or run for public office in America. Deriving its name from the biblical character, the Rebeccas dedicated their lives to promoting virtue, leadership, and friendship amongst its sisterhood, and continues to do so today. The Rebeccas' motto, faith, hope, and charity, parallels with their mission to exemplify and obey the golden rule. The presence of their symbols in Mezda's quilt indicates their participation in its construction, Baltimore album quilt historians assert that the Rebecca's 1851 origins correlate with the peak in album quilt production. Therefore, it is easy to imagine this quilting bee seated together in a Baltimore parlor discussing their ideas for a new sisterhood. 
Perhaps they circulated these ideas or even celebrated the Rebecca's historic founding by crafting a very special quilt emblematic of their friendship. Overall, Mesa's iconic quilt played communal roles as a medium of exchange, memory, and structure with metaphorical imagery acting as the building blocks of each organization. Like the Oddfellows' three-link chain, Baltimore album quilts united all kinds of citizens and institutions, specifically Baltimore's German-American communities, Protestant churches, and the Independent Order of Oddfellows. By connecting people from all walks of life, album quilts operated as conduits of publicity to help fulfill each organization's mission and philanthropic duties. While its actual provenance requires further research, the Mesa quilt can be interpreted as an important period document, which not only alluded to the socio-religious concerns in Victorian America, but also communicated ideas about individual and collective identity, gender, equality, and social justice. Female quilt makers and consumers, especially those associated with the Odd Fellows, shaped Baltimore's social fabric during the 1840s and 1850s. Thank you.